Hi guys, welcome to our MPLab XC8 tutorial for Absolute Beginner series. This is tutorial 37, part 2 of the R2C communication tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to configure the R2C bus with MPLab code configurator. So this is a simple demonstration how you can connect a PIC microcontroller as a master to a slave device. In this example, we are using the DS1307 real-time clock as a slave in this i squared c bus. The first thing we're going to connect, the SEL, which is a serial clock pin of the master. In this case, it's going to be on pin RC3. is connected to the SEL of the slave device. And the SDA, which is a serial data of the master, is connected to the SDA of the slave device. And here we've got two pull-up resistors, 4.7 each. Basically, this is how you can connect your slave device. If we had other slave devices, we could also connect them on the same bus line. So let us go to MPLab and see how we can configure our R2C bus. We're going to use the MPLab code configurator. The first thing to do is to select the MSSP which is Master Synchronous Serial Peripheral. Then this module can operate either in I squared C or in SPI mode. In this example, we're gonna start with I squared C in master mode. The first thing to do is to enable the MSSP. The second thing, the slew rate. You have to set it to standard. You can also set it to high speed if you're gonna use a high speed transmission, in this case, you're gonna set it to standard speed. The slew rate is basically how fast the signal changes from low to high or vice versa. By limiting this sudden transition, you can reduce the ringing from signal reflections and limit crosstalk between signal lines. At 100 kHz, the signal rates are so slow that the slew rate doesn't really matter. But at 400 kHz, you may experience problems, you'll have to enable it. So in this demonstration, we're going to set our clock to 100 kHz. The speed of R2C is going to be 100 kHz. So we're going to change the board rate generator value. In this example, we're going to set it to 13, which is going to give us an R2C clock frequency of 100 kHz. And in this case, we're going to set our slew rate to standard speed. But if we set our frequency to 400 kHz, then we'll have to set the slew rate to high speed. And here you'll have to select the format of your slave address, whether you're going to use a 7-bit or a 10-bit address number for your slave. In this example, we're going to set it to 7-bit. Most of the slave devices use the 7-bit address. You can click on register, you can specify some other configurations depending on your requirement. But in most of the case, the easy setup is going to be sufficient. Uh, the notification, this is just an information so we don't have to worry about. It said by setting system clock to internal oscillator, the PLL is not applicable. Okay, we don't going to worry about it because you're not going to use the PLL. So you're going to notice that once we select our squared c master, then our code configurator pin manager is going to select those two pins for us automatically. Pin RC3 is selected, is a serial clock pin, and RC4 is going to be the serial data pin. You can also see here, we've got two pins which are selected, RC3 and RC4. We're going to generate our code, click on generate. Save yes. Okay, the code was generated. If you go to our project, these are the MMC generated files. You've got i squared c dot c file, and you've got the i squared c dot h file. So these are the functions generated by the MPLab code configurator. These are the functions that you can use to access your i squared c bus. We've got the I squared C initialize. It says this routine initializes the I squared C driver instance for index, making it ready for client to open and use it. 
and says this routine must be called before any other I squared C routine is called. And this routine should only be called once during system initialization. The next function that we can use is I squared C master write. And these are the parameters that you have to specify. It says this function prepares a transaction request block, then insert it on the I squared C queue. Finally, it waits for the transaction to complete and it's gonna return the result. This basically function handles one I squared C master write transaction with the supply parameters. And these are the supply parameters. The first one is data. So this is gonna be a pointer to the block of data that we're gonna send to the slave. The second parameter is the length, the length of the data block to be sent. The third parameter is the address of the slave. And the last parameter is the I squared C message status. These are the message status that we can receive from the slave. I squared message complete, I squared message fail, the I squared C message pending, I squared C struct start, I squared C message address no acknowledgement, I squared C data no acknowledge, and I squared lost state. The next function is R squared C master read. It's basically the same as the master write. You're gonna need also these few parameters. The data that we're gonna receive, the length of the data that we're expecting, the address, and the message status. So here the simple example, how you can use the master write and the master read functions. You can go through this example to try and understand how you can use it. So we've got some other few functions. The I squared C master TRB insert. The I squared C master read TRB build. The I squared C master write TRB build. The I squared C master Q is empty. I squared C master Q is full. I squared C pass collision ISR and I squared C ISR. So you can go through all these functions and try to understand how you can use them. In our next tutorial, we're gonna learn how to interface the DS1307 real-time clock with peak microcontroller. We're gonna use these functions, the master read and the master write, to read the date and time from the clock, and the I squared master write to write the clock parameter to the slave device. Let's go to our MPLAB code configurator again. If we selected the I squared C slave device, so these are the parameters that you could set. Enable the MSSP, the slew rate, you can set it to standard. If your master is, is on standard, then you have to set your slave to standard as well. The other thing that is important is serial port. It's seven bit polling. You could also set it to 10 bit. And here you have to set the slave address. Each slave device should have its own address. This is, is usually set with the external pins of the slave device. And that's all guys for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're gonna learn how to interface the DS1307 real-time clock with the peak microcontroller. We're gonna use this I squared C functions to write date and time data to the slave device. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to receive more tutorials in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.